Methods of data collection. The first method is an observational study. And that's where researchers observe and measure characteristics of interest of part of a population. Experiment is when a treatment is applied to part of the population and the responses are observed. So an observational study, all you're doing it is observing. An experiment, you're applying a treatment to part of the population. A simulation is the use of mathematical or physical model to reproduce the conditions of a situation or process. So a simulation is used when it is not humanly possible to do the experiment. So you use a simulation in order to get some statistics. The next is a survey, and a survey is an investigation of one or more characters of a population. And lastly, we're going to talk about a census. And a census is a study that obtains data from every member of the population. So a census will have the entire population in its study. So let's do this example. What method was used for the given study? We recorded data for each subject on amount of exercise and number of colds last year. So in this example, nothing is done except for recording the information. Therefore, it's an observational study, making a connection of exercise and colds. This next example, again, we want to find the method. A group of doctors performed a study in which diabetics took cinnamon extracts daily while control group took none. After 40 days, the diabetics who had the cinnamon reduced their risk of heart disease while the control group experienced no change. So this is an example of an experiment where we use cinnamon for part of the group and nothing for the other part and then we determined whether cinnamon was effective or not. So this is an experiment because there was something applied in the treatment. A study of effects of changing flight patterns on the number of airplane accidents. So they want to know if they change the flight patterns if there will be accidents with airplanes. And in this case, because we don't want to actually have accidents happen, we would do a simulation to see if changing the patterns would create an accident. Next one is a questionnaire was given to a sample of female physicians to determine whether their primary reason for their career choice is financial stability. So in this case, this is a survey. A questionnaire is a survey. Pause and try. So again, simulation, because we're using crash card dummies, we don't want to actually harm humans. Pause and try. This is an experiment. We're experimenting, does eating oatmeal lower the blood pressure? Pause and try. This is an observation. We're simply observing the students, fourth grade students, and solving a puzzle. Pause and try. This is a survey. So in this case, it's a survey. We're asking, do you approve of the way the president is handling his job? So we're surveying people. Pause and try. So in this case, it's an observational study. A medical research is testing the difference of uh, symbolic blood pressure levels between male and female, but they're not applying any treatment. They're just observing if there is a difference or not. Pause and try. 
This is an experiment, okay? And it's an experiment because we have people doing the Atkins Weight Loss Program. That is a treatment, so therefore it is an experiment. So now some key elements of experimental design. There's the control, the randomization, sample size, and replication. So when we talk about control, we have control group. And what the control group is, is to understand the effects of the treatment, we need to compare a group that receives the treatment with a group that receives no treatment. And the no treatment group is the control group. And it's the control group because there's no treatment, so that's what we have control of. When you're applying a treatment, we don't know what's going to happen, so we don't have the control there. So the control group is when we have no treatment. Some key elements of an experimental design for control. The first element is confounding variables. And this occurs in experiment when the experimenter is not able to distinguish between the effects of different factors. So when you're doing a study and you have different factors such as blood pressure and diabetes and weight, so there's many factors that are going into the experiment and you don't know which one is really causing the effect. So you don't want to have too many variables when you're doing a study. The next is called the placebo effect. And this is when a subject reacts favorable to a placebo when he or she has not been given no medical treatment. So they are given a, some type of sugar pill, told that it's the medicine, and they feel better, and that's called the placebo effect. And, it, and it's just something that they're feeling because they think they're getting the actual medicine. Blinding is a technique when the subject does not know whether he or she is receiving a treatment or a placebo. So this is done in studies to really get an idea of the effects of the placebo or the actual treatment or medicine. Double blinding is when, or double blind is an experiment neither the subject nor the experimenter knows if the subject is receiving the treatment or the placebo. So that would be double blinded when no one knows. Randomization, and randomization is the process of randomly assigning subjects to different treatment groups. The logic is to use chance as a way of, to create two groups that are similar. So randomization is commonly used in statistics. Replication. So replication is the re repetition of an experiment on more than one individual. Good use of replication requires sample size that are large enough so that we can see effects of the treatment. So when you're doing statistical studies, you want larger samples so that you can get better results from your study. So now some sampling techniques. The first sampling technique is the simple random sampling. And this is you select your selection so that each has an equal chance of being selected. So simple random sampling, everybody has a chance of being selected. Systematic sampling, you're selecting some starting point and then select every K element in that population. So in this case, it, we're selecting every third person. So when you have some type of system that you are going to collect your data from, the next sampling technique is called convenience sampling. And you use the results that are readily available to you. So when we're talking about convenience, it's 
easier for you to collect the data because they're right around you. And this next one, stratified sampling. What stratified sampling is, is you're going to divide the population into at least two different groups with common characteristics. Then you're going to draw some subjects from each group. So you're going to divide it into groups, and then you're going to take pieces of each group and study it. So these groups is called strata or a stratum. And the next one is called cluster sampling. And this is when you divide the population into sections or clusters, and you randomly select some of those clusters, choosing all members from the selected cluster, used extensively by government and private research organizations. So again, clustering is when you're dividing the population into sections, and then you're studying full sections. So you're not just taking pieces from each section, like stratified. With clustering, you're taking the whole cluster or the whole section. So we're going to do some examples here. We want to identify which type of sampling were used. So we pick a name out of the hat. Well, in this case, we're picking a name out of the hat. This is simple random sampling, because anyone could be picked out of the hat. Now, again, with any type of sampling, there's always bias that could happen. And bias means a problem in the way that things are being done. So the possible bias, if we were to do simple, if we were to pick a name out of the hat, is that the names in the hat are from one location. So that's a possible bias if we were to use this method. This next one is selecting third student, every third student, to taste test a new soft drink. So we're only going to select every third student, and in this case, this would be systematics, every third student. A possible bias here could be that the students chosen like soft drinks. So every third student could like th soft drinks. This next example is 24 students are randomly selected from each grade level at a high school and surveyed about their study habits. Now because we're taking pieces of each grade level, we're taking a group from each grade level, that's where stratified comes in. So stratified sampling is this. But a possible bias could be that the members chosen could all have poor study habits. So there are always biases or problems when we're doing statistical studies, and it's important to recognize them. And this next one, you divide the class into six groups of three students each. And then you randomly select two groups to determine most popular major studied at BCC. So in this case, this would be cluster sampling. Cluster sampling is when you divide it into groups or sections, and then you take the full group when you study. So a possible bias is the members of the groups chosen could all have the same major. I mean, and this is the idea of if you've taken classes with other students in your major, you're likely to sit around them in class. So when you were to take a group, there could be some bias in it. So this example is you're studying the participation of students in the class with the teacher by taking the six students closest to the teacher. So this is convenience. It's the six closest students to the teacher. And the possible bias is students closest to the teacher have easier access to that teacher. So it could be a bias. Pause and try. So this is simple random sampling. Again, we're random, randomly dialing and asking a, a question. Pause and try. 
this is convenient. He's asking his eight, 18 friends. It's easy to ask your friends than to go door to door. So this is convenient. This is systematic. He's stopping every third vehicle. Pause and try. So this is stratified because out of the 10 cities, we're taking 500 people, pieces of each city. Pause and try. This is cluster. And it's cluster because we have 20 equal grids and then we're going to study 30 of those grids. So we're taking the full grid and studying it. Pause and try. This is convenience. And it's convenience because it is a article and the, the poster card that's getting sent back is inside. So it's convenient. Pause and try. This one would be stratified. Again, we have the males and females broken out, and then we're taking samples from each. Pause and try. And this is cluster sampling. So the author conducted a survey of driving habits by randomly selecting three different classes and surveying all the students as they left those classes.